what I'm gonna do is called the aggregate stability test. Okay, and what I have here is I have two pads of soils. This soil here in my right hand, this soil has been managed, heavy chemicals, heavy salt load, a lot of tillage, a lot of monoculture, no cover crops. This soil here in my left hand, this soil here has not seen any tillage since the 1970s. It's been in cover crops, been in a uh, no-till situation for we're going on 30, 40 years now. This soil here has become highly active both biologically and still has the same physical and chemical standpoint that the soil over here has. And what we're going to do is we're going to just show how these two soils react when placed in water. Okay, now keep in mind, the only forces that are going to be acting upon these soils right here is just the force of the water rushing into the pore space. Okay, what we're going to see out of these soils is this soil here, we've all heard of sand, silt, and clay. That's basically all we have left in this soil. We have very low organic matter, and we just have the mineral comp composition of this soil. This soil here, we have a combination of sand, silt, and clay, just like we do in this. But this here, we have the effects of the biology. And the effects of the biology comes from low disturbance, keeping the soil covered, keeping a lot of diversity out there, and keeping the roots growing as long as we can during the year. From that process, what we get is a substance in this soil called glomelin. And glomelin is just biotic excretions made of organic matter, amino acids, a lot of lycoproteins, and it's just a gluey, sticky substance. But what it does is it actually gives this soil strength, strength to handle the forces of water, the forces of, ro of erosion. And this soil here, when it started out naturally, did have that, but our management has depleted the soil of that. So with further ado, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop these two pads into the water, and we're gonna look at the stability of the aggregates. Watch how each of these soils react to the water. As you'll see, all we've got here is just the forces of the water infiltrating what pore space of these air-dried soil pads. Pretty distinct difference right here, right? And I want, what I want you to think about as you look at this right here, think about what happens to this, these microscopic soil particles. Now we've all heard about erosion, surface erosion. We think of erosion as going something running off the field. No doubt that also happens. But in my opinion, every field is erodible. Even if it's perfectly flat, just like these are sitting here level, think about when the rain falls on the field, what's gonna to happen to these microscopic soil particles as gravity takes over? Well, they're gonna fill the pore spaces that were available on the surface of that ground. Once they fill those pore spaces, that's where we start getting our surface sealing. That's where we start getting our crusting. Then, as that surface gets sealed off, it keeps raining. If we've got any slope, where is this going? It's going to go down slope to the nearest stream, to the nearest river. Eventually, in this neck of the woods, it's got the potential to reach all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. I'm sure all of you have heard of the Gulf hypoxia. What causes the Gulf hypoxia? Is it the nutrients we apply? Is it what we do? Or is it where it stays? If it stayed in the field, folks, and wasn't in the Gulf, we wouldn't have the hypoxia, right? Okay. Look here at this soil. You think about your investment. No matter, everybody's gonna have inputs. We put nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium on these fields. A lot of it gets bound to the soil particles, right? What happens when we have erosion? Is it gonna stay in the field or where's your investment gonna go? All right, look at managing in the healthy system. Think about where our phosphorus is, our nitrogen. Think about what the water's doing right now. It's still raining. This particle here, you think it weighs the same as it did when I put it in there, or does it weigh more? The increase in the weight comes from nothing but water. What do we want as producers? Do we want to be able to store water, have it available? This soil pad here not only has water, but it has pore space, has air space. Guess what all this biology has to have? It's just like me and you. It's got to be fed, it's got to be watered, and it's got to have a stable address and a good home. That's what happens when we start creating a healthy ecosystem. And no matter what you're growing, from no matter what nutrient cycle it's required, no matter what type of energy flow is required, when you can get a soil reacting this way to water, to sunshine, and to everything else that requires crop growth, which way are we gonna be better? All right, and it all boils down to 
All these soils were naturally created. These soils here started out the same. The difference is us, folks. The difference is how we managed them. Even this soil here at one time was managed in a degraded way. But over the last 20, 30, 40 years, we've changed it from this to this. Now, hey, we've not degraded our soils overnight, have we? It's took us 80, 90, 100 years ever since we've settled this country. One thing I want you all to understand, we're not going to change them back into a fully functioning state overnight either. This is something we got to have patience with. So I want everybody to keep that in mind too.